Hello, welcome to the Eat for Endurance podcast. My name is Claire Shorenstein, and I am a sports dietitian, endurance athlete, and mom of two based in Aptos, California. And I'm so honored that you're listening to me today during a workout or in the car or doing stuff around the house or wherever you happen to be. You're probably surprised to hear from me today because I just released my last episode five days ago. I am recording this short bonus episode for two reasons. So first, I really, really want to share some important information with you well ahead of Thanksgiving that I think you'll find valuable. And second, I want to take Thanksgiving week off of podcasting as I was originally scheduled to release an episode on Thanksgiving day. So instead of doing that, I plan to get out in nature, hang out with my family, eat lots of delicious food, of course, and try my best to disconnect from social media. So today's episode is, I guess you could say, mutually beneficial. (laughs) Um, It is Sunday night, November 17th at the time that I am recording this, and I just spent the afternoon at a very fun and large Friendsgiving party. So the holiday season is definitely in full swing for my family. And this can, of course, be a time of joy and caring and giving. But it's also so easy to get caught up in the hustle and bustle. And I know that's definitely how I often feel. I am a really go, go, go type of person. I say yes to pretty much everything because I don't want to miss out. And there are just so many fun things going on. Um, but you know, it can get to be a little too much and you can start to drown in, uh, that drained feeling and the overwhelm and the stress and all that. So I really want to make sure that you're not just giving to others. You're also caring for yourself. And that is what we're going to be talking about today. We're going to be talking about how to make that possible because I know it's so hard for so many of you. Honestly, a lot of these things I'm going to be talking about, I'm like literally saying to myself, just so you know. Um, So what are we talking about today? I'm going to be sharing my top five tips for taking care of you during the holiday season. I'm also really excited to announce that I'm having my first ever Black Friday sale Tuesday, November 19th. That's the day this podcast episode is coming out through Friday, November 22nd. I have four new offers and services, including a free one-to-one coaching session in there. And these offers are only available this week, but you do get lifetime access to my digital products and you can use any of the one-to-one services anytime before June, 2025. I'll be giving you all that info halfway through the episode. So please don't skip over that part if you want to grab these deals before they're gone. All right. So let's get going with our topic for today. Um, And let's chat about the fun, but at times stressful and busy holiday season that we're all in the midst of, right? I'm actually reminded of when I got married and I was planning my wedding. So our rabbi who was marrying us, he said to us that, you know, part of navigating the buildup to our big day and planning our future life together was, quote, managing the joy. So lots of people, lots of opinions, lots of joy and air quote joy, lots of stress. All of that equaled lots of things that we had to manage both outside of ourselves and within ourselves, right? It's a phrase that my husband and I continue to use on the regular, you know, 11 and a half years of marriage later, because it's just so relevant to so many situations. And honestly, it always kind of makes me giggle um, just thinking back on it. Um, But I've, you know, I've used it to describe a big lead up to a race. Um, I've used it to describe family visits during the holiday season and just so much more. So please feel free to borrow that phrase if you feel it would fit into your life as well. All right. So. Here are five things that I recommend to my clients to help them feel good, both emotionally and physically, and not fall prey to overwhelm and burnout during the holiday season or really any time that feels stressful. I'm just going to go into each one and really dig deep into them. All right. So first, and this one is going to sound obvious, but just stick with me for a minute. You have to keep eating consistently and adequately each and every day, even if you're traveling, even if you have a big holiday meal coming up. Again, I know this is like, duh, well, obviously, Claire, it's a really big one that I am constantly working on with clients, especially during the holiday season, but honestly, like all year long, like everyone struggles with this one and throw all these things happening that are like throwing you out of your routine. um, It's even harder. All right. So I can't tell you how many food journals I've reviewed with these like massive gaps between meals and snacks. And I promise you that leads to nothing good, especially for active people, because of course, this is a podcast that's largely focused on uh, serving um, an active population. So sometimes this is very unintentional because most of the time, you know, you just haven't planned very well and you don't have what you need available. Other times it's very intentional. For instance, when people are barely eating all morning and afternoon on a holiday because they're, quote, saving their calories for a later meal. 
please do not do that, especially if you're one of the many people exercising or racing earlier in the day. I mean, there's so many turkey trots going on, right? Um, you are just really setting yourself up for crappy energy levels, poor recovery, and honestly, overeating later on, which I'm sure is the opposite of what you want to do. None of that will feel good for you. If you are exercising on Thanksgiving, which not everyone does, but you know, is a very popular thing to do, please eat before that session as you would on any other day. Fuel during that session if it's lasting more than 60 minutes. If you're going for a long run, for instance, have a balanced recovery meal afterwards, or maybe it's just a snack depending on the timing of your holiday meal and when you get back and all that. I promise you're going to feel so, so much better and you're going to enjoy that holiday meal just as much if you eat, okay? Um, also, I know you've all heard this a million times before, but it really is worth repeating that you do not need to, quote, earn or burn because how many turkey burn things are there out there? You do not need to eat to earn or burn what you eat on any day, including Thanksgiving or any other holiday. This is just one day or one meal. And I know that it can feel like a lot when there are just so many holiday parties. And it's like you have Friendsgivings and Thanksgiving. You have like all these things that are just constantly happening over a month or more. But when you're nourishing your body well and you're truly allowing all foods to be in your diet when you want them to be, the foods at these events no longer feel like a big deal, truly. This is, of course, part of a much bigger conversation that we don't have time to get into right now. I just wanted to mention it. Um, so eating balanced meals and snacks every three to five hours or so, depending on your needs and how active you are and all that, and especially on a holiday, it's going to help you feel less out of control around food during the holiday meal itself. It's going to allow you to enjoy what you're actually eating as well as the experience of being with family and friends. So you're not just going into like last supper mode, right? It really does make a huge difference. So just try to practice that. See, see how that feels if you're not used to doing that. Now, what if you're traveling? So that's a big one. Okay, I'm traveling. I don't have access to certain things. Please make sure you're packing plenty of snacks or buying food at the airport or on the plane or wherever you land um, to make sure you're not going long periods of time without nourishing yourself. Um, I do have a free travel food ideas and checklist download that you can grab from my website if you need help here. It's a very popular download. You just go to my, I think it's nutrition resources tab and it'll be under free resources. And lastly, planning in advance. That is just so essential to staying on top of your food intake. And this really doesn't have to be complicated. Like, yes, if you want to be cooking elaborate meals and all that, like today I made a big batch of chili and meatballs and muffins and all that stuff. Not everyone has time for that. You know, get some easy grab and go snacks. Make sure your kitchen, pantry, and freezer are well stocked, especially with non-perishable goods or longer lasting perishable items. Again, if you need help there, look at that travel uh, freebie. It has a great checklist. Um, maybe you're making breakfast the night before if needed to make sure it's available or you're keeping those non-perishable snacks in your uh, purse or backpack or car or whatever. There are lots of things that you can do um, in advance, easy things, um, just to make sure you have something to eat. Maybe it's not like the ideal thing, but it's better than nothing. Okay. All right. So that's number one. Second tip. Don't lose sight of your top priorities and goals that keep you feeling good, all right? Everyone has a million things going on, and there will be days that you will have, you will absolutely have to compromise to keep yourself healthy and sane. Um, that said, if you know that you feel your best when you do certain things for yourself, you know, see if you can continue to do those things to make sure you're showing up as your best self. And I'll give some examples. So I know personally, I'm a much more pleasant person to be around if I exercise like at least four times a week. Uh, worst case, I make sure I just like get outside and walk a bit if I can't make an actual workout happen. But I do try my best to make four times happen, um, assuming I'm healthy and my body is feeling good, right? Those are two important things there. Um, there are a million other examples. So maybe you have you need a certain amount of sleep each night that you really need to protect to, to feel your best. Or maybe you have an upcoming race and you really want to fit in specific training sessions and you're, you know, figuring that out somehow. Maybe there are other things that you need to make time for to help you cope with stress 
you know, things outside of exercise, outside of food. So maybe it's reading or listening to music or creative activities, talking to friends, whatever it is. These are skills that I often work on with clients to really make sure we have those things available so that we're not just relying on food and exercise because that's those are the common ones, right? So really make sure you're identifying what your priorities are and what your goals are and figure out where you're willing and able to compromise because there will most definitely be situations where you have to be flexible. So the main takeaway here is that you're not just constantly caring for other people, fellow parents, like we are doing so much for our kids, um, but it's really important to remember what you need to do for yourself to keep feeling good. I really don't love the phrase self-care, but I guess this is essentially what we're talking about. And I'm not just talking about taking a shower. That's a basic need. That is not self-care. All right. All right, moving on, the third way to take care of yourself this holiday season is to set appropriate boundaries when needed to protect yourself, especially as it relates to diet and body talk. So I would be shocked if any of you listening will not encounter some form of diet or body talk at your holiday meal. Maybe, maybe, okay, you know what? Maybe your family is just like really great about this stuff and you guys are all, you have healthy relationships with food and body and all that stuff, but it's so, so common um, to encounter this stuff and it's really important to know how you might respond, all right? So, so for instance, one way to set boundaries may be to just not engage in any of that diet talk or to allow comments on what you're eating or what your body looks like, right? So if someone starts talking about something that you know is just like not good for your own mental health or just makes you feel kind of uncomfortable, there are many different ways you can respond. And by the way, this doesn't just go for diet or body talk. Maybe it's someone starts talking about something political or someone starts talking about anything that makes you feel uncomfortable. Like you don't, have to talk about these things. All right. So for example, you can change the subject, right? You can ask them not to talk about your body or what you're eating. Just ask them not to do that. You can walk away or simply not respond. I mean, your responses are going to be different, whether you're talking to like a friend or a family member or a stranger, obviously, right? Um, You can politely excuse yourself. You can just go to the bathroom or say you need to take call or do whatever it is you need to do. Uh, You can talk about how great you're feeling because you've started to nourish yourself in a way that feels really good, right? Maybe you're even saying like, hey, like I've been listening to this great podcast, you know, wink, wink. (laughs) And I've learned so much about feeling myself, whatever it is you want to say. You can talk about how delicious the food is because I'm sure you're eating some delicious, awesome stuff. You can compliment someone or ask for a recipe and just talk about that kind of thing. And you also can just comment that you're not interested in talking about whatever it is that they said. So lots of different ways to respond. There are more than that, obviously, um, but just some examples. Another boundary you may need to set relates to kind of protecting your space or your time so that you can carve out that time for yourself to do the things that you really need to do to feel good, as we just talked about in number two, right? So whether you have family visiting or friends or there are certain events going on or people demanding things of you, whatever the case may be, obviously you can't, you know, obviously there are times where you just need to do the thing and you can't really uh, say no or whatever it is, but, um, but doing your best, you know? So the thing that comes to mind is like anything childcare related, like obviously there will be times where things just can't happen. Um, But doing your best in any situation is all you can do. Okay. All right. So before we dive into number four, I want to take a quick break to share some brand new offers and services that I have put together for my Black Friday sale, which is happening today, November 19th through Friday, November 22nd. I'm even offering free one-to-one coaching, so keep listening to hear all the details. If you're listening after November 22nd, don't worry. I have lots of free and low-cost resources and other great services available on my website, eforendurance.com, so you can go check that out. And if you are listening during my sale, bear with me as I take a few minutes to give you all the details. You can also get all this info, uh, including links to purchase on my website, eforendurance.com and in the show notes. And if you follow me on Instagram, I'm I'm, I'm posting that in my stories too. So if you're just like, I don't feel like listening to this right now, you can do that. So here's my first offer. 
When you buy my Race Ready Masterclass for $45, you get my Nutrition Mini Guide Bundle for free. Race Ready teaches distance runners how to build a simple, personalized fueling plan for a half marathon or marathon, and my Mini Guide Bundle contains six downloads plus some worksheets on everyday eating and a bunch of different performance nutrition topics. This is such a great package if you're new to sports nutrition, you want to brush up some, some basics, or you have a big race coming up that you really want to crush. I actually got some feedback from a client. I wish I had had the quote right here that I could read to you, but it essentially was like telling me that she bought the bundle to someone I've never worked with or heard of. Um, and that she had like PR'd her swim and was doing well in these races because she was following the information that she got in this download. So it's just like some great cheat sheets. And then the masterclass really gets you set up well. My second offer is that you get $75 off my peak performance course, which is a comprehensive guide to nutrition for endurance athletes, including everyday and performance nutrition. And this is the great part. When you buy the course this week only, you get a free 20 minute one-to-one -one call with me to use anytime before June, 2025. This is a really great deal if you are the type of person that enjoys self-paced learning, but you'd like a little support. You have some specific questions that you'd love to ask me and you get both for just $300. $175 using code Black Friday at checkout. Again, you can grab that link on my website in the show notes or in my Instagram. And my third offer is a new service that I am only selling this week. It's a one-to-one -one personalized fueling plan package that includes two 30-minute nutrition coaching sessions with me for just $275. So whether you had a bad race experience in the past or Maybe you just want some extra support to feel and perform your best. This is a great way to dip your toes into one to one nutrition coaching. So why did I create this service? Because this isn't something I normally offer. It's mostly because I wanted to make working with me more accessible because I know not everyone wants, needs, or can afford a more extensive one-to-one -one coaching package. But you can buy this now. And again, you can use it anytime before June. So if you have a spring race, this is perfect. Lastly, I'm offering one month of one-to-one -one nutrition coaching for $699. This is my top tier service that normally requires a two or three month commitment. And you get to try it out for just one month, no strings attached, at my three month reduced rate. So during our time together, if you're curious what we're doing, we're exploring your unique history. We're assessing you as a whole person in the context of your busy life. We're strategizing how to achieve realistic and sustainable health and performance goals. We're deep diving into things like everyday eating, performance, nutrition, health markers, gut health, body image, and truly like whatever else you really need help with, right? So this is the time for you. You get everything I normally offer in the first month of my coaching program, including two one-to-one -one coaching sessions, unlimited chat support on my client platform, Practice Better, personalized nutrition recommendations and handouts, food journal review, and so much more. Again, more information on all of these services and links to purchase are on my website, eatforendurance.com, um, in the show notes and in my Instagram stories in case you follow me there. If you have any questions at all um, at, about any of this or anything else, shoot me an email, claire at eatforendurance.com. All right, so let's get back to tip number four. My fourth tip is an extension of number three. Uh, I guess I could have combined them, but I separated them. And it's really just saying no when you need to. Uh, no to attending an event, no to doing something for someone else, no to a workout that you had planned because maybe your body just isn't up for it. Maybe no to going out to a restaurant because you really just want to eat your own food, especially if you've been like eating out a ton. Now, this is a hard one for sure, um, especially for anyone who is a people pleaser, but it's really so key to protect your time and your emotional and physical health as well as your stress levels. And saying no applies, you know, when needed applies to everyone, but I just, I'd say, especially to my fellow parents, we just have so many demands on our quote, unquote, free time. Uh, Cause like, what is that? Uh, birthday parties, team sports, school events, and just countless other things. Personally, I know I have the hardest time saying no to things, especially social things that I know my kids would love to do, especially because I'm friends with a lot of the parents, but I know that just doing too many of these things are going to leave me exhausted because we've overcommitted. Honestly, that was my entire fall. <laughs> like, like truthfully, August through early November was basically me saying yes to everything and finishing that period of time like a nervous wreck. So this one is most definitely a work in progress for me. I'm just being honest here. But I think you just have to accept that you're going to disappoint some people or even yourself because like I truly wanted to do all the things and that's okay. 
So it just comes back to priorities. Like maybe there will be some days where it truly is a priority to go to every single event and you know you're going to be tired, but it's worth it to you because these events are so special. That's kind of where I was at for a little while. Um, But I think it's more important to maybe like tease out which events are actually important to you and which ones you can maybe pass on. Um, Maybe you can make plans with people who, you know, where you said no and, you know, during a less busy time, for instance. For parents, I think really dividing and conquering is definitely the way to go. It's like the way to survive. Um, And this is such a great strategy to allow the other parent to load up on me time. So whether that's for exercise or maybe it's just to get some household things done that really have to get done. I guess I wouldn't call that me time, but honestly, any time without the kids, even if you're going grocery shopping, sometimes feels like a vacation. So I don't know. Yeah, I'd call that me time. So definitely take a look at all the things you're saying yes to reevaluate that going forward. You know, what can you take off your plate? What responsibilities can you share with other members of your household? What truly really needs to happen right now and what can wait? For food related things, can you perhaps rely on, you know, some convenience items to make your life easier on certain days? Just as an example. So just a few thoughts, something to think over. And just to be clear, because I just want to make this really, really clear. If you're constantly saying no to things because the food situation stresses you out to the point where you're rarely saying yes, like you're avoiding going out to eat and you're not meeting up with friends and just all that kind of stuff, that is not what I'm talking about here. That's a very different situation and a different topic, more in the disordered eating and eating disorder space that needs to be addressed separately. Just wanted to clarify that. And lastly, for my fifth and final tip, I highly recommend starting a gratitude journal. And wait before you roll your eyes at me, because I know this sounds super cheesy. And I know when people talk about gratitude or meditation or these kind of routines and stuff like that, especially again for parents, I totally tune out and roll my eyes. But just give me a minute to explain, because truly this one has really helped me. Um, And it's so easy. So A quick story. A friend told me last spring that she keeps what she was calling a gratitude journal and how much it had been helping her. So I decided to give it a try. And I am now on month seven um, of writing a short list of things that made me feel grateful or happy or proud or truly like any other positive feeling right before I go to bed. I have not skipped a single night in seven months. And that's really saying a lot for me to like stick with it to that degree. It literally takes two minutes. I sincerely believe that it has had a major impact on my mental health. Otherwise, I I would not be talking about this, believe me. Uh, I'm the type of person who will look back on my day and I will see all the things I didn't do. I will see the things that went wrong. I will dwell on the things that like, you know, maybe there was something I did. I don't know. Something was off. I would dwell on that, obsess a little bit, criticize myself in other ways. Um, I'm very hard on myself in case that did, that wasn't clear. Um, So this exercise has really forced me to focus on the things that, you know, have brought me joy, that have made me feel emotionally or physically good, even if like for a split second, like truly. Um, Maybe the something I ate or drank was like really delicious or whatever else that stood out to me in my day that was positive. All right. So in other words, it's more than a gratitude journal. I I don't even, I mean, I'm just calling it that for lack of a better world word. It's I guess a positive thinking journal. Maybe that's a better way of describing it. And, you know, sure. I still think about some of the things that went wrong in my day. And obviously like, it's not like, like I'm going to stop taking my antidepressants because I am on Lexapro just, you know, to be clear, but, uh, you know, it's something that really has benefited me so much that I thought I'd pass it along and see if it's something that maybe some of you would like to try. Um, you know, I think now, like as I get ready for bed, cause it's the last thing I do before I go to sleep and it gets me to start thinking about the delicious cup of coffee I enjoyed or, the swim that was super hard and made me feel so awesome. Or maybe my girls were giggling and laughing before going to school or the great client session I had. Um, It gets me thinking about those types of things rather than all the things I didn't have time to do or all the work that's following up on my to-do list that's stressing me out or the really terrible hour-long violent tantrum my five-year-old had like today (laughs) or the disappointing news I got or whatever else that's kind of dragging me down. So it helps me go to sleep with a more positive attitude and on those really hard days, like I've had days where they were really, really bad days and the page literally may have like one or two things written down. I think the, actually, no, I'd say at least two things I can think of. Um, my morning latte always makes it and usually some form of a cuddle or a hug with my kids always makes it. So, um, but you know, other days I write like 20 things down. So 
All to say, if you're looking for something really easy to do, especially if you struggle to see the good in your busy days and you're kind of, there's just so much going on again, the holiday season comes to mind here because you're just like all over the place and a lot of people are busy at work and trying to get lots done before holidays and such. I really highly recommend this. I, just give it a try. I mean, it can't hurt. Worst case, you're like, this is dumb. <laughs> Claire, thanks a lot. Um, I got a really cute mini like fake moleskin notebook on Amazon. I think it came in like a two pack. And I literally just finished my first one. So I'm starting my new one tonight and it lives on my bedside table and it's now part of my bedroom, bed bedtime routine. So if you do start this, I'm so curious to hear if you find it helpful. All right. That is my bonus episode for today. That's all I got for you. I hope you found it helpful. And of course, I'd love to hear your tips on how you take care of yourself during the holidays if you'd like to share them. You can find this entire episode, by the way, in blog format if you head to my show notes on my website. If you're interested in reading over it or you prefer to read things rather than listen. And again, don't forget my Black Friday sale ends this Friday, November 22nd at 11.59 p.m. You can find all the information on eFrienders.com. I'm pretty sure I'm going to put a header um, at the top of my homepage with a link to all the deals and a link to the show notes as well. So you'll find that. I'm going to be taking Thanksgiving week, say, can't even talk anymore. Thanksgiving week off from the podcast, as I mentioned. So please stay tuned for my next full episode coming out on Thursday, December 5th. It's a really awesome episode with midlife health and nutrition specialist Val Schoenberg, who's also a sports dietitian. And we had a really amazing chat about several important peri and postmenopause nutrition topics that you won't want to miss. I hope you all have a wonderful, safe, and delicious and cup-filling Thanksgiving holiday, and I'll see you all in December. Thanks again for tuning in today.